All right. How's it going, everyone? DJ, welcome to the factory here in San Diego. And uh, I'm going to cut a haircut for you, surprisingly. Um, what I've done is I've pre-sectioned, and um, the haircut that I want to do is uh, maybe a little bit longer than usual. I uh, generally tend to work kind of a lot of bob shapes, and I thought it'd be nice to do some layers and work with a little bit of disconnection and show you a few different kind of techniques within layering. So I've sectioned off this underneath area, and what I've done is I've gone down the middle for symmetry, and then I've worked from the high occipital to right behind the ear there. Then I've worked through the crown, from behind the ear, all the way through to the other ear, so ear to ear. And then what I've done is I've sectioned right here at the temple, right at the parietal, excuse me, I've sectioned these little panels off. So what's going to happen in the haircut is, basically I'm going to take this underneath, and I'm going to concave layer it. So I'm going to utilise elevation above 90 degrees, and I'm going to take the weight out, but keep some of that length. So really taking the guts out of it concave layering being a more aggressive layer. And then over the top of that, I'm going to disconnect a convex layer. So we've got concave on the underneath, and what's going to happen is with this shorter hair through here, what that's going to do is it's going to stick out. And that's because it's the most protruding part of the head shape. So the concave layer is going to act like a fake kind of graduation in a sense. It's going to support the crown area. Then I'm just going to connect it all the way through in these panels and I'm going to disconnect these sides so that we have some length and some exaggeration. So I'm going to start in the back and really important, I'll, I'll spin it around Brad because the lighting might be a bit weird. So I'll come over here, maybe like right here, probably better that way, yeah? Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, I'm going to cut the concave layer first on the underneath and Basically, I've basically two ways that I can cut hair, and that is I can cut hair on the inside of my fingers, and I can cut hair on the outside of my fingers. And one of the great things about working with either way is it's all to do with elevation and what happens naturally. So if I work on the inside, when I work shorter layers, it's fine. But if I'm going longer, I'll have this natural ability to pull the hair down. So I'll actually leave this heavier than what I want it. So if I switch that position and now work on the outside, I can allow the elbow to lift the hair and to protect length. So that's kind of the reasoning behind this. Um, there's a reason for everything in haircutting because whatever you do, there's a result. So it's figuring out what those results can be. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask. Um, I did this haircut the other day. I was with my uh, good friend Ira Pope Sage. You should follow him. Um, we did the we do these things called geezers live basically, which is similar to this and I revisited this technique It's something that I used to do quite a lot back in the day when I worked at Port Mitchell um, And I really enjoyed it. So I thought I'd like to share this with you guys today So starting right in the middle, I'm going to take a vertical section So what's very important is how I hold the hair here What I don't do is I don't put my palm to face the, the, the head shape if my palm faces the head shape, it makes me tilt over and hunch over, and that's because it's uncomfortable. I'm trying to seek comfort. So all I do is actually stand normal, and I actually put the palm to face me, and I put the hair in between my index finger and the middle finger, the famous middle finger, and all I do is now lift the elbow up to the ceiling so I can swing through. And I'm going to take it shorter here and leave it longer towards the exterior. So starting here. And I'm going to move to a longer length. Obviously density is going to play a big part in this haircut. Uh, Mia the mannequin here doesn't really have that much hair. So I'm not going too, too aggressive to begin with. Second section, same thing. All I'm doing is taking vertical sections and I'm going to use maximum over direction. I'm going to bring everything into that first section so that it gets heavier towards the front. As you can see this balance, that's a triangular balance and I want to work with that through the entire haircut. So everything going to be over directed to the center and that's because there's less hair on this underneath area. There it is. Using the points, tips of the scissors because I want a softer finish to it. 
So what you're seeing now is you're seeing the length being protected, but the underneath, I've now got dimension and shape in there instead of it being full density all the way through from roots to ends. So that's what a concave will do for you, it makes it a little bit easier. Next section, same thing, everything to the middle. So if I was in a rush, I could basically condense this haircut. I could have brought everything into number one when I got to like the second section. But from here to here, that's a lot of head shape change. So what I'm having to do is make sure that I can comb through the hair and get it cleanly into that first section. Instead of taking it for granted that you're always going to get it. So you can see, leaving that outline, definitely working with the softness of it. Layers removes weight, so it makes things softer and lighter. Layers bounce and they move back and forth, move up and down. I don't really want to restrict that movement by putting a hard outline in. I'm not working on a bob, I'm working on longer, softer, sexier hair. So you can see now that I've done that first panel. So now I'm going to move to the other side and I'm not going to switch positions. If I come over here guys, then I'm going to have to work from the length down. Nine times out of ten I'm going to take the length and cut it shorter. So staying in the same position so that I can take the weight and work it out of the haircut. Get my guide from this previous side. Working cleanly because if you get unclean then your haircut's unclean. Same thing. Comb in the side of the section that I'm about to cut, not what I've already cut. If I comb this side, that's the guide. And what'll happen is I'll push the guide towards me. And instead of getting longer, I'll actually get shorter because once it moves off its base, it's now shorter than what it was on its base. So I've been very careful that you make that last comb the side of the section that you're about to cut, not what you've already cut. Taking that previous out of the way now, I don't need that. Just get this cleanly out of the way. So now let's say I was in a big rush. I could take all of this and pull it into number one. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take my time through it so I can allow for like head shape change and stuff like that. Tension's very important. It's one of the most important things in haircutting because it determines how clean that haircut is. through. So pushing the hair into the center, into the first section, and there you can see the guide. I'm just following that with the tips of the scissors. Just gives me a kind of softer edge on that underneath. Last section, then we can move into the disconnection. They're enjoying my camera work. Good. <laughs> Again, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask. If not, I'll just keep yapping about what I'm doing. And uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. Definitely. Really Very appreciate good it. So now you can see that underneath, we've got some shape in there. I've got some lift in there now. So this being shorter. Obviously short hair is stronger than long hair, so it will stick out from the head more than let's say this will because gravity is already pulling that down. So it's going to act like a buffer or a gra fake graduation for this crown area over the top. So question here, yeah. uh, one of the, Teresa wants to know if, it, if a client had thin hair, would you avoid the ends looking thin? It like just how depends would you on it? what your, uh, great question, it, you know, density is very important. But it depends on what you're looking for. Me personally, when hair's longer, it becomes softer, I feel like. The more you chunk it out, the less movement it has. Um, so I'm not really a big fan sometimes of coming in and putting a solid outline in. 
let's say if we were dealing with less hair, I probably might not do this technique. I might not take too, as much weight out. I might stick to working more of a convex layer. A convex layer is that layer that follows the vertical contour. So it's actually the wider, more bigger, heavier layer, whereas concave just cuts through it. So it's very aggressive. It's kind of like liposuction concave. It's getting rid of the, the cuts, if you will. All right, so just quick check on that, see if we're in the same ballpark, which we are. And now we can move to this next area. So two positions to be in to cut this. I'm still gonna be working on the outside of my fingers for elevation purposes. But two sides of the head I could stand. I could stand here and work from the bottom up, like Drake, or, <laughs> dad jokes all day. Good reference. Or I could work this way, and work from the top down. And if I do that, I'll probably cut this shorter than what I want it. I want it to get longer towards the front. So it makes more sense for me standing here and working and controlling the length all the way through instead of cutting it out. So that's the reason why I'll stand here to do this crown area. on this side. So continuing vertical sections, anytime you take a vertical section you're always going to have a tendency to remove weight. Horizontal has that tendency to build weight. So now what I do through the top has to play in with what's happening on the underneath. So when we look through here I can see that underneath length right there. So I'm looking to be longer than that, and shorter than that, and it's gonna be a, a nightmare, it's gonna be a big mistake. So I need to be longer. So we'll start longer than I think I need to be. And then if we need to go shorter, we can. And I'm gonna cut a line that follows the vertical contour of the crown. And as soon as it passes through the crown into the top, that's when I'm going to start the line to get longer and longer. Because from here to here really affects how the hair falls in the back, not in the front. It's when I start to move into horizontal, then it takes care of what happens this way. Okay, so. We've had a couple of questions of just yeah. kind of um, going over again what our overall plan is here. Okay, so if you're just joining us, guys, what I'm doing is I'm working a longer layered shape. It's triangular, that means it's lighter in the back and it's going to get heavier towards the front. But what we've got is we're working with disconnection. So instead of having this big heavy shelf of weight back here, which tends to happen in long layers, and then makes it look very mullety, right? even though the weight might be triangular. I've taken the weight out by cutting a concave layer. And so we've taken all that guts out, and now what I'm doing is I'm coming over the top of that so that I don't see all these little layers. It's an undercut basically, but with layering. Take a bit more off that. So now I'm moving into the crown area and I'm just cutting a convex layer which falls over that concave in the nape area. So I can now see where that's going to fall. And that's probably a good area for it to be in. You're going to see a window. So continuing, next section. So now that I'm on the second section, I've got to figure out how heavy do I want it to get towards the front? How much over direction do I need to use? I need to pull away from what I want to keep. So I want to keep the length in the front, so I'm going to pull it back, all right? Pull away from what you want to keep. But I have options. I could bring everything into number one, just like the underneath. Well, the underneath, I did that just so I could protect some length through this area, right? If I do it through the top, it might be too heavy, so I'm not going to use maximum over direction. I'm just going to send every section to that wall behind the mannequin. So I'm utilizing the room, the salon that I'm in, to help me. Send it straight back and elevate like before. 
So same principles, comb the side of the section you're about to cut, not what you've already cut. And that will keep you either the same length or longer. If you go shorter, that's a mistake. That means game over. You don't get three lives on this one. Because once your client sees that, then they're not very happy with it and they've lost confidence in you. So knowing is key. Same thing. All I'm doing is just adding the next section and sending that and the previous straight back behind the mannequin. Not into the middle. That's too much over direction. Just straight back. So I've, I've actually reached the round of the head now. So right where it starts to turn into the side. And it's very flat from that point forward, right? So I don't have to waste time and take three more sections or two more sections. I can actually condense that now and send them straight back. That to me is hybrid. Knowing when to be gas, when to be electric. When you're in the salon or salon, like I say, it's very important that you understand the value of time. Being a salon owner, hurry up, get on with it. You know, time is money. But can you do a precision haircut in that amount of time? I think it's possible because it's what I do. So it's getting rid of the superfluous things that you don't need all the time. You know, if you're in your kitchen and you've got all afternoon, then do that. But when you're working against the clock, you want to try and make things a little bit more efficient for yourself so you don't waste time. So, same thing on the, pre on the next side, excuse me, and I will stay in the same place. And the reason for me standing in this position, guys, is that I'm working from the fingertips up, right? So that allows me to control what weight I cut into it or what weight I remove from it. If I stand here, I'm probably just going to cut that off. So it's understanding what the tendencies are and what your body's going to do for you. My feet positioning, if I'm sending everything straight back, I have to be parallel to what I'm working on, right? Sending it perpendicular that way. Now, if I move this foot, it's going to change where I direct the hair to because it's a very standard motion. It's not like you're going to start doing these things to it. So I work in that way. Then if I move this foot, it's going to control where my over direction is. So very important to understand where your feet are because your body is attached to your feet. Very simple. So I'm also using the mirror because now that I'm on this side, it's further away from me. I don't really know where I'm sending it to. I can only see two dimensions when I'm looking at this. I can see what's happening vertically, so I can see the height, right? And I can see what's happening with the depth. I can see how long the hair is. I cannot see the width. So when I look in the mirror, now I can see that. This is like a giant flat screen with you in it. So you could, you know, watch yourself cut hair all day long. It's like your teachers in the mirror saying, no, that's not overdirected enough. Straight back. It's that last dimension. I suggest trying it out like as soon as you get back to the salon. Use it as much as possible. I guarantee your work will be stronger. It's very methodical. Question here, um, yeah. they missed it. Did you take uh, pivotal parting or just vertical sections? Just vertical sections, no pivoting. Checking in from Vietnam, Poland. That's awesome. Belgium. It's such a you know, great uh, thing, social media and harebrained with the massive global audience. It's made our industry smaller and bigger at the same time. It's really cool. So, all I've done is the crown area, I've pulled that straight back. So, straight backwards over direction. So, what that means is it's going to fall heavier towards the front. Pull away from what you want to keep. Real simple. 
example of that. If you want it to get heavier in the front, you pull hair backwards. If you want it to get heavier in the back, you pull hair forwards, right? If you want it to get heavier at the top, you pull it down. And if you want it to get heavier at the bottom, you lift it up. You do that while you use finger angles that also pull away from what you want to keep. So that's kind of the premise behind hair cutting. It's movement, it's angles. So just have a little check through this now. see if we're on the right track here with my elevation and my over direction so yeah so that's where it was cut that's the elevation it was cut so that's where I have to check it if I check it like this by just directing it back to where I cut it look at that line now completely different so if I come in there now and I clean that up I'm now gonna put a hole in the haircut cross checking not cross cutting right and the chances are if you bring it to the right place you will like the results much better I find as a teacher this is the number one area where people change their haircuts it just goes wrong real quick and some people don't even cross check because they hate what they see so cool So now you can see that layering in the back there. The whole point of doing this shape, guys, the triangular, is to move away from the mullet, a long layer, where everything's lifted up and forward or pulled forward, and it leaves all this weight back here like a phone book, right? And then you try to get any form of lift and movement with like six or seven round brushes, and it looks good in Instagram, but as soon as it walks outside, the elements take over, and it's just nothing anymore. So this is just something that will work with everything. I find that triangular shapes are really good with our face because of our bone structure, it's angled that way. Pretty much everything you have on your face, nose, lips, chin, the jawline, <laughs> the cheekbone, they're all going that way. Even your collarbones that way, your necklines that way. So it really fits. All right, so let's continue into this next bit. Hope you guys are enjoying it. If you like what you see, you can follow me on Instagram at Daniel Joseph Muldoon, or just type in DJ Muldoon. And you can see quite a lot of stuff on my IGTV and on my Facebook. Um, heading to LA tomorrow to film a class four hair brained on Wednesday, so that should be fun, so stay tuned for that. So moving through into the top panel now. So work into these panels. And all I'm going to do is extend it, what I've just done. So it's the same thing. So this is where I determine how long it gets and how heavy. And I'm just gonna continue that angle that I have there, just working off of this round. Straight up to the ceiling. So this can be a bit of a tricky area because of height. And then we see people do this, pulling it into all these different places and that. Now, don't be naive in thinking that you can lock the hair. You're a human and you've got this organic material, like thousands of hairs in your hands. See, I didn't lock that. So I've got all this looseness now. What that does is it changes the tension. So if I cut that line and then I look at that line cleanly, it's not going to be clean. That's because I moved the hair. So I'm gonna stay in that place. Now, if you make this all about the elbow, then there's a limit. Even I have a limit. I could just do that and that's it. But if you drop the elbow, watch what can happen. Now, you can continue higher and higher and higher so that you can reach those layers, all right? It's not all about this. You don't have to do that all the time. Drop the elbow. So it gives you that leverage of more, like another foot. So that can help. So you know you're not letting your client slide in the chair or sitting on pillows or whatever it is. Lori asked, Lori asked, what's going on? Jody said, something magical, Lori. <laughs> ah, that's nice. <laughs> so continuing this through. Looking forward to this weekend. I'm gonna be in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I've never been there before, so I'm really looking forward to it. 
sold out two day class. Knowledge destroys fear. Got a few more coming up. Got a three day class here in San Diego. There's like one place left in that class. Um, it's only seven stations in this salon, so that's how many people can be in the class. Uh, so it's quite intimate and it's three days, so it's really intense and cool. Then off to Denver on the 15th of October and uh, teaching a class there, looking forward to that at uh, Moave Salon. Then where else am I going, Dawn? San Jose. San Jose. That's private though, yeah? Yeah. yeah. And then Charlotte. Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And Richmond, Virginia in November. Hello from Albuquerque. Hey, Albuquerque. So again, everything's been brought straight up to the ceiling and I've continued that line getting longer towards the front. Do the same on this side and again, I'm gonna stay in the same position for consistency. I don't wanna work from the front back or from the length in. So get my guide from this previous panel. What class is coming up in the south area? Um, the south, I've got a private class in San Antonio. Uh, New Mexico, Albuquerque, I think that's sold out now though. Yeah. So, and then the Richmond, one, Richmond, yeah. Richmond, Virginia. I think that's sold out as well. And then I usually take December off, so um, I'm back at it in uh, January. So again, it's going straight up. Using my mirror to help me here. What's the best way for them to sign up for a class? Uh, you can sign up for a class by going on my website. And uh, that's thefactoryhair.com slash events. Usually uh, whatever I'm, bu I'm booking myself, I put through there and you can get tickets. Uh, but I don't always organize the classes myself. Other people bring me in and then they sell tickets to the classes. So I usually put that on my Instagram feed. You can see that schedule. And it usually tells you where to go to sign up. You can also take a one-on-one -on -one class with me. I started take, doing one-on-one -on -one classes uh, on Tuesdays here at the factory. And um, we've got one tomorrow. Somebody's coming in from Canada for the day with me, which is awesome. And you can do that by contacting me through my DM. So that's the layering. Now I'm going to let these side areas out. And that's just going to give me added length especially where we have less hair through here because the hairline being much higher in the front than it is in the back so that's why I protected it and that's why I took weight out of the back because I don't need that weight there if I leave that weight there then I'm just basically cutting a mullet and then you're trying to be a Jedi to make it not look like a mullet with your round brushing and stuff so you like the Jedi look like, huh? we watched Star Wars last night me and I so Okay, so that's the layered shape, and I'm not going to bore you with blow drying and all that rubbish. Um, so I have got another one in the oven. So I pre-cut this in the kitchen last night. And why didn't I do it here? Because I have a sick child. Say hi. She's deep in the iPad. <laughs> so I had to do a pre-done in my kitchen. So it's been a while since I've done a kitchen cut. All right, so this is the blow dried and ironed. I've not really done much with the refinement, but you know now you can see the shape. We've got going to get a lot of movement, but you see right now it's quite heavy. That's because I've cut it very blunt. So with it being layers, I need to come through this top part and lighten it. So kind of like the yarmulke section because that's what falls on everything. I'm going to start to point cut into it. So we'll start back here with, with the uh, convex layer that hangs over the concave. And I'm working over the head because that allows me to lift. Right? And so now what you'll see is you'll see the strength of that. I'm going to come in and start to just weaken that. It's kind of like a comb. I'm turning it from that to that. 
So what that will do is it'll allow those layers on the top surface area to just melt into the layers on the underneath. And by me using my scissors, I control where I take the weight out and where I leave it. So, I'm not really a big thinning scissor user. I just think that's because of my background coming from without Sassoon. I think I would have been uh, beat up. What scissor are you uh, cutting with today? Okay, so the scissor I'm using is uh, Mizutani, and it's actually made for me. So it's got the logo on it and it's really super thin and you can get them on my website too. So what that's doing is it's starting to make these melt a little bit more, there's a little bit more work to do on them. So going a little bit deeper with the point cut and it's not as simple as just cutting and hacking weight out. It's actually organized de <coughs> demolition. Oops. Website address again? Thefactoryhair.com Again, everything's up on my Instagram. If you ever want to uh, get in contact with me, ask questions, please feel free. I believe in uh, knowledge destroys fear, so I'm all about sharing it, making it easier for people to do what we do without having to stress. I believe in uh, Xanax free hairdressers. And your overall purpose for pointing into it? Again? Just to add separation, so the layers on the top can just melt into the layers on the underneath. You have to remember this is where all the hair is gonna fall onto everything else. So this is the visual part of the haircut. So what we've got guys is we've got a disconnected concave layer on the underneath that's triangular and then we have a disconnected convex layer over the top of it that's getting longer towards the front as well. So we've got this nice triangular balance to it. So now I'm going to come through the front, I've done this, I'm happy with that. I'm going to start to take some of the weight out here. I don't have to do too much because she's got finer hair. Janelle wants to know how you decide your elevation and which direction you will project. Okay, so elevation is going to determine how much weight I remove, where I elevate it to. So on the underneath, I elevated it above 90 so that I could take the guts out and keep the length. So what you've got, you'll see, is a much shorter length on the underneath, on the inside but keeping along the through here. Then when I did the convex, I chose to use convex because it's fuller, it's wider. It leaves more weight in there, concave does that. It's very aggressive, convex adds a bit more width to it. So that's why you see that projection when you move the hair around. See, that's what I was looking for, is that soft, wispy layer that's gonna move all the time on that person's bone structure. So the front area, I choose, I'm going to choose to leave it longer. I don't want to cut a fringe. I want it to be that kind of long, exaggerated, triangular layer shape. Just a little bit more and then we're almost done. This is always the visual part of the haircut. You built the house, so now you're decorating it. So I'm just coming in and putting a bit more space in between that. That's about it. Let's put a little something in it. Just to move it around. Now you'll see the expansion of those layers and how they'll move around. So 
So a very exaggerated, longer layer, triangular layered shape. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I had a ton of fun doing it for you guys. Um, yeah, very cool. So thanks again for joining us. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Disconnected, concave, convex, triangular layer. I'm sure it'll be up. You can watch it anytime. And thank you, Hairbrain, and thank you everybody for uh, tuning in. And we'll see you next time.